Definitely an investigation movie like no other. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Memories of Murder. This is a Criterion Collection film that I got a while back and I've always wanted to see it. This is one of the movies that really got Meng Joon-ho, director of films like The Host, Okja and Parasite most recently. This is a film that he put a lot of work into in the earlier parts of his career because this is in fact pretty much a retelling of a very prolific killer, serial killer in South Korean history. There is a little bit of dramatization in it, but really it is following this investigation that started in the 80s, ended in the 90s, and they never found the guy. Not until recently. Now, obviously, there's going to be some spoilers in this. This film did come out in 2003, but I do want to just give that notion to it. If you have never seen this movie, I would very much recommend you watch it before watching this review. However, if you have seen the movie or if you don't care, let's get on with the review. This film follows two investigators, and apologies if I get the pronunciation wrong here. The first being Park Duman, who is played by Sung Kung Hao, who has been in a lot of... Uh, Bung Jun Ho's films, and there's the other detective, Su Toi Yun, who is played by Kim Sung Kyun. And these two have very different methods to how they come across it. Park has much more of a wild and reckless, almost you would say kind of dirty cop vibe, but not entirely, but really feels vindicated in his uh, thoughts and actions, even though he really doesn't have anything to back it up on it. And then you have So, who is far more by the book, by the numbers, going off of actual facts. One guy's about his gut, the other guy's about the facts. And these two have very different correlating views at the very beginning of the film when it comes to this investigation. But as the film goes on, these two kind of interlink and surpass one each other almost at one point. And that is the beginning of what makes this movie so unique in terms of how it portrays this kind of aspect of storytelling. Now, we've seen a lot of murder investigation movies over the years, and this story, technically speaking, is not much different from that of what we've seen, but it's how it's portrayed that makes it so interesting. Bong Joon-ho made a point that when he started writing this, he did basically an entire year of research before he even started. One of the inspirations, actually, in fact, for him was from Hell, Alan Moore's massive uh, graphic novel and he actually even threw a little bit of shade <laughs> that he thought that the film wasn't that good and to be honest it's not but the film doesn't just talk about the investigators but it also talks about this area of Korea that is this somewhat kind of backwater area there's a lot of this strange kind of cohesion of farmland and factories and mining all within like walking distance of each other because that's what the means of living is in it at the same time you have people who are crammed into these tiny little houses some with not the greatest sanitary conditions and it seems that more of the priority is keeping people safe from supposed attacks from north korea as we see there's a lot of drills and lights out measures and whatnot being done whereas people are still living in these kind of shitty conditions all the while there's a serial killer about the first scene of the movie is something that really should set the precedent for how you're going to view this story. And that's with Detective Park finding the body underneath this grate in this kind of walkway, this ditch. And on top of the covering is this little child who's mimicking him, who's repeating what he's saying. And so you have this contrast of this tied up choked raped victim underneath this little tunnel and unbeknownst to this little child who's standing on top of it he's just shooting the shit with his cop and mimicking him and copying him that is such a weird contrast and it's that feeling that perpetuates this whole movie that you're getting somewhat of a realistic but also just like a seemingly stranger than fiction interpretation of how this investigation went at they didn't catch him, obviously, and there's a multitude of reasons why. One of them being that the Koreans' investigative force didn't have the technology that most would have. This is, again, the 80s and the 90s, and they didn't have things that would be an automatic giveaway for who the killer is. Like, yes, they could find semen, but they didn't have the means of DNA. You just gotta put yourself into that concept of the limited technology they would have back then. At the same time, you also have to very, very clearly address the corruption and the ridiculous idiocy that is 
plaguing through the detective force. They are known for bringing in people with barely any shred of evidence and then basically holding them against their will illegally for days on end and pretty much torturing them to make them confess. And these guys are just being idiots, just torturing people, whereas Detective So is kind of trying to figure out what the hell is actually going on. He's actually investigating and it's only when he's like, okay, let me see. Yeah, this isn't the guy. So while he is not participating in the events that are happening around him, he's not really stopping it either. More so criticizing Detective Park more than anything. Again, that does show what the priority seemingly is with these guys, is proving each other wrong rather than actually finding the killer, for the most part. There obviously is the want to try and catch them. While these two do have their own flaws, they do want to catch this guy. They do want to stop it. Somewhat technically speaking for hubris reasons, but it does become a lot more about going after what they think is the right thing to do. And as I said, it really does start to make you feel a lot more conflicted about how one uh, means of operation is different from the other. And as we come to the end of the movie, when they have who they believe is a suspect, but they are given actual proof that it is in fact not him. You are so caught up in that scene because you have the same gusto, the same vigor that these guys do for the person in particular, but you have to accept that they cannot do anything. And that scene is so good. Every part of this movie has this great mixture of humor, very underlining, realism and depravity and depression. You really do feel like it's a different sort of story and it's not just because they don't catch the person, but it's also the means in which people they find and these random little bits of humor in amongst the moments of horror, because there's one scene in particular where this lady is going through this field and she's hearing noises, but she can't really tell, but she's hearing a whistle from the killer. And at one point there's this big wide and you see him pop up in the background and then you see him go back down again, kind of like a hunter. Talk about the actual killer for a second. He was eventually found, but he had actually already been arrested for killing his sister-in-law uh, years prior. He had always said that he was innocent from these killings, but eventually in 2019, they were able to confirm via DNA while he was still in prison. And they're like, oh yeah, it's you. However, the weirdly weird thing about it is that because he's already been charged with a life sentence for the previous thing and because of uh, Korean sta um, statutes, he will never fully be charged with these murders. And it, that's a weird rabbit hole in, in itself, and I would very highly recommend you look into that because it's a very, very, very weird sort of system, and it's somewhat aggravating. But the fact that this went on to be basically the most prolific killer in South Korean history, he was kind of nicknamed the Zodiac's uh, Korea Killer, and that all perpetuates into the ending of the movie, where it jumps into the future well after the investigation has basically fallen apart, and Detective Park is now a salesman, and he's on his way to do a deal or something, kind of like, you know, do a sales pitch and whatnot. And he comes across the field, stops, and he goes up to the same ditch, and he kind of peeks his head down into it to find nothing, of course. But then when he turns around, there's a child who says, hey, what are you doing looking in that? He's like, well, I, I was here long ago. There was something that happened here. And she's like, funny, because someone else was here not too long ago, and they said the same thing. They said they wanted to come back and see what they had done. He asks, well, what did he look like? And she says, yeah, just ordinary. Nothing special about him. And it's at that point where his there is this direct look into the camera. It's the last shot of the movie. And that was the note I had heard so much about from this film, was that ending shot. And so when I watched it, it's Bong Joon-ho's basically pointing directly, speaking directly to the killer because he was of the thought that he was still out there and he would probably see this movie. And Bong wasn't wrong because the killer did see this movie. Kind of crazy. And that's one of the reasons why this movie is just so unique because of aspects like that. There's one thing that did kind of weird me out. And the only way I found out about that was by Googling it and going through a few message boards. 
There are a few scenes where Detective Park is getting inoculations either via needle or through an IV drip, and they do not say what it is. They never mention what it is. They even have his wife or his lady go and grab um, the medication from a doctor's office at one point, but you never know what it is until uh, you actually have to look into South Korean culture. And that's another really cool thing about this movie is that there are elements that are made specifically for obviously Korean culture because it's a Korean movie. So of course it would be directed towards people in Korea. It's a sugar saline drop. Like basically this idea of, refi of, of sugar, like a, a sugar drip would keep you healthy. And there was so much disease in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s that this would help children like get through fevers and whatnot like that and people will still do it today even though it really doesn't have any kind of medical um, significance to it anymore but it's just a part of korean culture that they will do that despite there being really no evidence to say that it's actually any helpful it's, it's helpful anymore but that's again kind of tying into the character because at one point he goes to a shaman who tells him to put like the dirt of the murder scene on this piece of paper and it will reveal the face of the killer and they give this a try and it never goes anywhere but it really does reflect upon his ideology his thought process of how he goes through life and how he goes through his investigations memories of a murder is a really unique movie i really enjoyed how different it was from other films of its genre how it perpetuated investigations, how it showed police corruption in both a pretty depressing but also somewhat black comedy kind of way, how it showed that sometimes even if you really really think you've got it right, you can be wrong, sometimes you don't get the happy ending. You don't even get an ending at all. And that is one of the reasons why this movie is so well regarded. And if you've never seen it, I would very, very highly recommend it. In the end, my review for Memories of a Murder is a 6 out of 7. I really enjoyed this film. I'm very happy to have this in my Criterion collection. This is the Blu-ray version for uh, the film. I'm very happy that I have this. It's definitely falling into the Hall of Despair kind of collection I have for the Criterion films. If you want, uh, I actually have the list of films I have for my Criterion collection, in the, and I'll have it in a link in, uh, below. You might find some of these uh, ratings uh, very uh, poor in taste, or you might find them dark humor-wise. Check it out if you want to. Anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review. I should be just about ready to head home from my trip, so I hope you guys have been enjoying these videos while I've been gone. It's been fun to have put these videos together to know that there's something for you guys while I'm gone. This will have been probably the most amount of activity I've done consistently in like the last few months because of my job and everything. Very, very, very much recommend this movie. It's really, really good. It's a very different kind of movie. I guarantee you, even if you don't like how it ends, you will still like how the movie was put together. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested more, subscribe. And finally, after all of my long-winded blah, 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 tell me what you guys thought about this movie. Have you seen it before? What did you think about it? What's your favorite Bong Joon-ho movie? And again, I deeply apologize if I have mispronounced anyone in this review. I most likely have. I'm a fucking butcher when it comes to it. No excuse, but... I apologize regardless. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time.